Hey friends, welcome back to Hot News. Hope you're having a good Monday. Life is enjoyable for you. Hope your weekend was good. I got to relax, so I'm good. I'm better. I'm refreshed, ready to dump on into some hot news, which we're gonna start off with some AMD news. Not what's in the title, but you're gonna wanna hear this anyways, because it appears that the new Ryzen 3000 chips are currently on sale over on Amazon. So if you use our link in the video description, which are affiliate links, so we'll get kickbacks, you can pick up the Ryzen 5 3600, the Ryzen 7 3800X, or the Ryzen 9 3900X at a discount. It looks like the 3600 is about $20 off, the 3800X is about $60 off, putting it very close to the 3700X territory. And then the 3900X is about $30 off. So you can save that money if you've been looking to pick these chips up. They are now on sale for you to look at. And you can, again, use the links in the video description. But just like Ryzen 3000 has shaken up the CPU industry, well, according to AMD's GPU division, they believe that they're going to do that to NVIDIA when it comes to 4K gaming. They just haven't decided to do that right now because they've been focusing on the majority of gamers. So they said that with the 5600 XT launch, they're, they're really trying to hit 90% of the total gaming market who are playing on 1080p and 1440p resolutions, which is actually probably true. I don't know very many people who game at 4K besides with TVs and consoles. Getting somebody who plays PC gaming at 4K isn't really there. More people would prefer to have a 1440p 144 hertz monitor for three to $400, as opposed to shelling out for a 4K 60 hertz monitor. So it hasn't really iterated to the point where 4K gaming monitors are to the point where most gamers would want to make the sacrifice for resolution and refresh rate. Just not there yet. Anyways, that's one of the reasons why AMD has been focused on just releasing the 5700 XT and now the 5600 XT, but no soul crushingly amazing 5950 XT. But they said that doesn't mean a 4K capable GPU isn't coming. It is coming, but for here now, we wanna focus on the vast majority of gamers. But similar to Ryzen, all of us need a thriving Radeon GPU ecosystem. So are we going after 4K and going to similarly disrupt 4K? Absolutely, you can count on that. But that's all I can say right now. So once again, AMD confirming that yes, they are indeed going to be bringing out a big Navi GPU, or maybe, I don't know. That's gonna be a, that, that could be like they're releasing something later on down the line and they're gonna disrupt it in like three to four years when everybody's on 4K gaming. And right now they don't need to worry about it. It actually doesn't re confirm a whole lot besides the fact that they do think that they can take on Nvidia. Maybe just, not right now, maybe not this year, maybe in a few years. We'll find out what that actually means, or it could mean that they'll release a 1080 Ti level performance for like $250. That would disrupt 4K gaming considerably. We'll have to wait and see. What do you think? Is AMD gonna disrupt 4K gaming like they disrupted CPU sales? Let me know down in the comments. But a lot of people are disrupted at how they launched the 5600 XT, including companies like MSI who have said that, yeah, that vBIOS that you want us to unload onto all of our cards, well, not every single card can hit that because the VRAM that was originally spec'd for the 5600 XT, which is where a lot of the performance boost on the new vBIOS that came out, which in case you have no idea what I'm talking about. You can check out reviews of the 5600 XT up there. But suffice it to say, MSI just rated their cards for what AMD originally spec them for. And so when you change the spec at the very last minute, not all of the cards are going to be able to do that because in order to get cheaper components, you have to cut costs. And so you give something that can actually run at a rated speed, but not at a higher speed. It's not overclockable. So and MSI saying that AMD pulled a pulled a little rough one on everybody. And that does seem to be the indication for a lot of people. If you go and pick up a 5600 XT at retail right now, you might get a worse card than was reviewed unless you're comfortable updating a vBIOS, which could potentially brick your card if the power goes out in the middle of you doing it. So you need to have a UPS so that your power, even if it does go out, you're not like, it's a complicated thing and can screw over a lot of people and make it so that the majority of people who bought it initially aren't getting the performance that they spec'd or will ever get the performance that was in reviews because not all cards are capable of hitting it. And not all AMD Ryzen coolers are as cool as this leak that came out last week. A lot of people were talking about this, but it turns out it was a fake. This is one of the reasons why I actually didn't initially report on it because it just seemed to be a picture and not something that was available at retail anywhere. So I was waiting to see if that there was gonna be some sort of like production model of this. Anyways, AMD saying that this picture is indeed a fake. This is not an official upgraded Ryzen 
cooler that is going to be coming out. This is just a separate one that somebody else seems to be making and they warn against actually using it because if it's not made correctly, the coolant inside those tubes could potentially leak out and destroy your computer. So we'll have to wait and see if there's any more information on this. This could be a legitimate counterfeit that actually works pretty well and looks like the AMD Ryzen cooler and just happens to be like a knockoff, but we'll have to, we'll, we'll update you as we find out more information. But a product that did seem like it was never gonna come out, but eventually did, is ASUS's ROG's bezel-free monitor kits for triple monitor setup that help to use look what looks like Fresnel lenses to make it so that the bezels between your triple monitor setup disappears. This is gonna cost you $110, which is a little expensive for my taste, but if anybody's rocking a triple monitor setup where they actually need this, I would expect that it's not a huge cost. Are you interested in this? I'll leave a poll right up there. Do you wanna buy this? Is this something you care about? Speaking of products that need more time to develop, the Motorola Razr is available for pre-order as of yesterday. This $1,500 phone is gonna be expensive. Anyways, Motorola released some documentation about caring for your Razr, including the line that bumps and lumps are normal because of the plastic screen. It ain't gonna be a smooth experience. This early technology is not there. Foldable phones aren't really what I'm excited for. Samsung is expected to announce the Galaxy Z Flip in a couple weeks so we can see if that they've made any iterations on what was the Galaxy Fold to make it better. But right now I'm staying far away from foldable phones besides a gimmick because I don't want bumps and lumps on my phone. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Bumps and lumps aren't normal in humans. They probably shouldn't be normal on your phone but YouTube's gonna make something normal. YouTube might be giving away free channel memberships to specific YouTube channels when you become a YouTube premium user. This is actually a direct ripoff of what happens over on Twitch with you having a Twitch Prime account. You can give a free subscription to a streamer who gets the money from it, but you don't have to pay anything. It helps to kind of facilitate these streamers being able to earn more money, while also the people who are viewing it give away something for free and make it feel like they're contributing. It's $5 a month. Five dollars. Five dollars a month. Well, now you don't even have to worry about that over on YouTube, but you do have to worry about getting another social media app because the makers of Vine have finally launched Vine's successor, Byte. And it's the exact same app. Six second looping videos. Eventually, there's supposed to be some sort of creator monetization program to potentially help alleviate the outflux of creators who were originally on Vine but then moved to YouTube. A lot of the original Vine creators are now moving back. TikTok users also switching over to Byte. Uh, and apparently they also have a spam issue which they're working actively to resolve. Are you on Byte? Let us know down in the comments. Speaking of releasing stuff, Boeing has finally completed its test flight for the world's largest twin engine jet, the 777X. It, it, this is good news for Boeing after all of the failures that they've been having with the 737 MAX. And this this is a necessary step in order for them to get this plane out to customers, which is supposed to be next year, 2021, when Emirates and other airlines are gonna take reception of these things. And a hundred and million people took reception of a Wii. And in case you wanna get it repaired in Japan, well, that's gonna be over as of March of this year, Nintendo announcing that they can no longer uh, facilitate the repair on these things because getting the parts is hard. This console released 15 years ago, grow up, you people just get the Switch. That's basically where you should be, okay? But while Nintendo is killing off the Wii, it doesn't look like Sony is ready to kill off the Uncharted movie, even though they lost their director. The movie's supposed to come out later this year while well, they've pushed back the release date until March Fifth of next year. So giving it enough time to find a director and then complete the movie. It has Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg in it, which I guess works, but I'm not expecting a whole lot out of this movie. We'll see. This was supposed to be the start of like the Sony video game universe. We'll see if it turns out to be any good. Once you lose your director, it's usually not boding well for the project as a whole. But while Sony's not axing Uncharted, Psyonix is axing Rocket League on Mac OS and Linux, saying that they're no longer gonna support it just because they're trying to update it with new APIs over on PC, and that's gonna make it complicated because they don't wanna update it on Mac and Linux, and that's only 0.3% of the user base, so they're just scrapping it in general. And in case you purchased it on Mac or Linux, you can actually get a refund from them now. They're making that available, so you can do that, submit a form for your money back. But you don't need to get your money back for this because it's not existing yet, but you might spend your money on it if it does come out which is apparently there's hints and rumors and 
things in the air about a Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic remake that could potentially be coming out, actually calling it a reimagining for modern systems, making Knights of the Old Republic more fresh and updated and modern. This is something that I know a lot of Star Wars video game fans would love seeing this out on a new console would be amazing. A PS5 version of Knights of the Old Republic or an updated PC version with ray tracing maybe. We'll see if that actually happens. But let's talk about an old game, which is Half-Life, which Steam has made free, Valve has made free up till the release of Half-Life Alex, which is supposed to be coming out later this year. Well, there's a handy little how-to guide on VentureBeat to show you how to sideload Half-Life onto your Oculus Quest in case you wanna get practice for playing Half-Life in VR before Half-Life Alex comes out. We'll leave a link to that in the video description. And then something that I really wish didn't exist, unlike Half-Life, is emojis on license plates. Apparently, according to a new Virginia bill that's going through the House of Delegates, they might have up to six different emojis that you can put on your vanity license plate, which will run you $330. No, nobody needs this. Nobody wants this. Emojis don't need to be on license plates. How do you, how do you report that to the police? Oh uh, yeah, the car that hit me was VSJ Winky Face 72. No, this is terrible. This is awful, and I hate it, and it's time to stop. Just like it's time to stop this episode of Hot News. Thank you so much for watching it. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. Don't forget to check out those AMD Ryzen deals that we mentioned at the beginning of the video in the link in the video description. Uh, yeah, that's it. I'm Brett. We'll see you in tomorrow's Hot News. Bye. If you have bumps and lumps, you probably have cancer. Probably shouldn't include that. <laughs> Too dark.